Welcome to the Rock Management Insights, the videocast interview series of the profile unit Responsible Corporate Competitiveness of the University of St. Gallen. I'm Katharina Klöckner and today I'm here with Matthias Brauer, Professor for Strategic Management at the Institute of Management at the University of St. Gallen. Professor Brauer conducts research in the field of corporate strategy and, in particular, in the area of corporate restructuring. He won several awards for that research. One of his recent articles won the Outstanding Paper Award at the Emerald Literati Network Awards for Excellence in 2011. Today he will talk about divestitures as an important part of portfolio restructuring. Matthias, thank you so much for being here today. It's a pleasure to be here, thank you. In your research, you examine the questions of how and whether divestitures lead to performance improvements for companies. So um, why is it relevant for companies and what's the specific challenge here? Mm -hmm. I think uh, a good way, if you look for direct evidence uh, about the uh, importance of divestitures, is to simply look at what has happened in the last two to three years uh, uh, during the financial crisis, but also uh, if you look at the current business landscape. And when doing that, you will see that uh, you know divestitures have become a very, very uh, important tool for companies to regain their competitiveness, regain their competitiveness by you know scaling back their focus on the particular businesses they're very good at, and also increasing operational efficiency in doing that uh, by you know, uh, creating transparency and also getting rid of negative synergies. So uh, you know, to be very concrete, uh, take for instance the automotive companies, uh, automotive industry. If you look at Daimler, you know, they divested Chrysler. If you look at Ford, they divested several assets such as uh, Jaguar, Land Rover, Volvo. And also, if you take, uh, you know, really across industries a perspective, looking at the financial services industries, uh, which is, uh, has a very strong presence here in Switzerland, you'll see, you know, that also these uh, players try to offload a lot of assets in order to regain their competitiveness. And I think, uh, you know, a very uh, big debate is uh, about this big to, too big to fail. And really, essentially, this is a debate at, at its heart is the question about, you know, whether and when it makes sense to divest before actually companies uh, get too uh, excessively large and before they actually lose the oversight over their operations and then obviously facing a, a number of risks. And also, I mean, if you uh, just open today's newspaper, you'll find uh, evidence about the relevance, you know, looking at uh, Nokia uh, trying to uh, divest uh, its uh, operations uh, in terms of networks with Siemens. So I think there's plenty of evidence on the table that this is uh, highly relevant, highly relevant for firms to regain their competitiveness. And I might want to add one more thing, and that is uh, really that it is not only a crisis management tool, but uh, you know, if you look at some of the statistics and one I have brought with me here today, you'll see really you know, that across business cycles, divestitures and actions have become a very important pool, uh, a tool for, for good uh, portfolio management. Uh, now, you know, this is about the relevance. Now, you're also asking about the challenges. And I think, uh, to my mind, uh, the most important thing to first of all recognize is that uh, divestiture decisions are complex uh, strategic decisions, uh, which are also not very popular in general in organizations. And that obviously creates a lot of barriers when, when taking these decisions, but also when trying to implement these uh, decisions successfully inside organizations. And uh, I think uh, you know, that's the biggest managerial challenge for a top manager uh, who is responsible for taking these decisions, to get away from this negative connotation of divestitures, so getting away from this notion of divestitures are simply about dissembling an organization. Uh, that is uh, only true if it's not a well thought out strategy. Uh, but you know, in general, divestitures can be very, very useful, as I said, by increasing focus, by getting rid of negative synergies, by trying uh, to make organizations uh, simpler in order to then allow them to grow again. So I think uh, that is an important task for managers to get away both from an employee side as well as other stakeholders such as trade unions to tell them and to make really clear and evident uh, that there are benefits, clear benefits for everybody uh, in divestitures. What is the central insight of your research and what is new about your idea? 
Mm -hmm. I think one, one counterintuitive finding you, you might say uh, in regards to divestitures in general is that counter to that negative image most divestitures or most organizations still sort of harbor about divestitures is that on average we can say divestitures really improve a firm's market as well as accounting performance. So what does that mean in, in clear terms? It means if you look at firms which divest you will find that their market capital, their market valuation goes up as well as their operational efficiency improves. Now that as I said is something we can say across the board of studies. Now what is spe specific to uh, the studies we have conducted? Uh, I would say the, the most uh, important aspect is that we have uh, uh, dumped a very uh, simplistic assumption in, in prior uh, research on, uh, on divestitures in both strategy and finance and that is these studies have only looked at divestitures as, as single isolated events. And this is not really reflecting the complexity of business practice and that's why we have done you know, several steps and looked at linkages between divestitures, linkages between divestitures of the same firm, what other studies have not done. Other studies have also neglected that there are linkages between divestitures on the one side but also acquisitions on the other side because obviously companies not only undertake divestitures but they also undertake under acquisitions so it makes sense to, to look at this uh, linkage and last but not least what prior studies have also uh, failed to do is to look really at the linkage uh, between divestitures of a company and what's happening in the industry in terms of competitors are they also divesting or not and what we found out really that these uh, uh, linkages uh, have a, a huge lever in terms of uh, performance improvements so let me just uh, go a little bit into detail here. So getting back to my first point about linkage between the divestitures of the same firm, we could find, uh, we found in, in one study, uh, we could show that you know, so-called divestiture programs, so when managers do not go about divesting in an ad hoc reactive fashion, but they really sort of think more medium term about their portfolio and think how they can coordinate their divestitures, they achieve about three times a higher stock market performance than managers which sort of you know go about divesting in this ad hoc fashion. And then you know second aspect I talked about the linkage between divestitures and acquisitions. And here I brought with me a little chart to also visualize that a little bit. It looks like a Swiss Alp uh, mountain landscape, but it's actually the transaction behavior of Siemens. <laughs> and on the left hand side you can see the acquisition behavior and on the right hand side the divestiture behavior of Siemens. And a colleague of mine, what we found, not with only with Siemens, but across a large number of companies, is an effect that we have termed uh, growth desperation and indigestion. Now, what do we mean by that? What we found was, you know, that many companies, they grow very, very desperate uh, when they see, you know, competitors are growing uh, faster than they are. And then they engage in very aggressive acquisition sprees. And that is leading to the peaks here that we can see on that chart here. And then all of a sudden they realize, however, that they are not able to digest that growth. You know, all that integration efforts are taking managerial uh, effort and also managerial attention away. So then they engage in divestitures. And what we could find out in a very, uh, in a large scale longitudinal study was those firms which really take a more balanced approach to acquisitions and divestitures, so pay attention to the linkages, uh, they perform much, much better in the medium and long term, you know, keeping the volatility of these up and downs uh, lower. And last but not least, I talked about you know, a very recent insight we generated from a study looking at divestiture behavior by a firm and also competitor behavior in the industry. And for that purpose, we looked at the industry divestiture waves and we asked ourselves, you know, does it matter if a company divests at the peak of a wave? So when everybody else in the industry divests, so everybody has the same idea, follows the same, let's say, hype or trend. And uh, again, what we found out was uh, very interesting because uh, you can see that those uh, divestitures which take place at the peak of the wave, uh, uh, they generate even negative returns. So the stock market actually discounts this firm for being imitative, for just following the herd as we, as we say. And those firms which are more proactive in their divestiture behavior, which have a keen eye on competitors and are early to divest or sit out the crisis, uh, they are much better off. So I think to, to make it again short and in a nutshell, you know, paying attention to the linkages between divestitures of a firm 
between the linkages of acquisition and divestitures the firm conducts as well as paying attention to the linkages between divestitures and divestiture activity in the industry are really some of the key insights uh, which differentiate our work from uh, prior work in that area.